Yes guys and welcome back guys to a brand new video guys on my channel guys and in today's video guys we are going to be talking about Manchester United's last game that we went and played Newcastle guys away from home at St. James's Park and yes guys Manchester United have lost to Newcastle two goals to nil a game where Manchester United have got absolutely battered in a game that we got absolutely bullied in players didn't care as well we got absolutely dominated in in every single department we were shocking it's ten arms worst game as well when you look at the game as a whole as well not good enough on united behalf it's embarrassing as well dreadful lost for words as well and i'm a bit speechless as well and not good enough on united's behalf before i start today's video guys this video will not be fully edited due to the fact that you know his next game against brentford is on wednesday night so this video will be going up obviously on tuesday night so unfortunately i apologize for that guys as well anyway guys Let's get into today's video. We made three changes from the last game against Southampton. Talking about the start 11, so we started with De Gea, Delo, Varane, Martinez, Shaw, Tomine, Savica, Anthony, Fernandez, Rashford, and Weghorst. Get into the overall reaction now. Ten Hag's worst game. We deserve to lose. Lack of ideas going forward. Newcastle outclassed us. We got bullied. The players didn't care. United got dominated. United were beaten by passion. Desire, hunger, attitude, determination, commitment and work rate. Midfield was non-existent. It's disappointing, annoying and frustrating. Not good enough. Embarrassing as well. The midfield was a joke. Looked clueless. Newcastle got their revenge. We're crunching a pass together. We got dominated in every department. Couldn't get going whatsoever. As I expected, Newcastle will have more possession. It was competitive. End to end. Too many times we were not getting the ball in the right channels. Giving the ball away too easily. Newcastle created the chances. Big chance for Isaac. Great double save by De Gea. United have had a bit more possession. Did nothing when we've had possession as well. Newcastle have had the far better chances. Newcastle can't take the chances. The ball came across for Rashford. Anthony had a chance from a corner. Created nothing. Not good enough in the first half. Newcastle had a better start on the front foot. Causing United problems. It's been coming all game long. And Willock scores for 1-0. Giving the ball away stupidly. Taking far too long on the ball. Ted Hart makes substitutions. Newcastle control and dominating the game. Martial, a close chance. United haven't got going whatsoever. Not the right midfield balance. Playing it sideways and backwards. Haven't been a threat and haven't caused them problems. Defensively we were okay, offensively dreadful. Too many poor individual performances. Nobody didn't put a shift in. First half was poor, second half was not good enough. Overall, shite performance. Anyway guys, what did I make of the performance? I thought it was an awful, dreadful, shocking, embarrassing performance by Manchester United. I thought it was our worst performance under Eric Ten Hag. I think people might say 7-0. Obviously, when you look at that scoreline against Liverpool, was probably the worst. But no, put aside the Liverpool and City games and say, well, you look at that game against Newcastle, we were absolutely dreadful. We got absolutely dominated from start to finish. They outclassed us. They outpassed us. They, uh, they, they did the basics. United were dreadful. And every, everything in the... Uh, and the way how they won that game as well, Newcastle... Top class from Newcastle. Have to give praise to them as well, even though I don't want to. But yeah, they were fantastic, Newcastle. They got their revenge. We should have expected that the revenge as well after the Carabao Cup final. The players didn't obviously expect it from the beginning. And um, yeah, just, you know, <laughs> lost for words. Can't express it, to be honest. Disappointing afternoon for Manchester United. Not the result that we're after. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about in this game, I think, because I think from start to finish, we were dreadful. And, um, you know, Newcastle got what they deserved. United deserved to lose. Uh, you know, we were set up to lose, unfortunately. Um, not the right midfield balance from the start. Uh, I don't know what the starting eleven was, to be honest. Um, just baffling to see McTominay from the start going as a number 10. Uh, Bruno uh, coming back deep. Um, that's completely not right. And the first place, not the right midfield balance, is doing that because of McTominay scoring four goals in two games for Scotland. The guy dropped another stinker. He's absolutely dreadful, McTominay. Whoever thinks McTominay is world class or rate right, that guy, you're, on a, you're living on a different planet because that guy just put in an absolute crap performance in for Manchester United yet again. And I expected it because I know what McTominay's like. He knows that. Casemiro might be out suspended, but he'll drop another stinker. And I'm going to question that later into this video as well. But 
That performance from start to finish, Newcastle wanted it more. They absolutely did us in terms of hunger, passion, pride, uh, fight, um, you know, desire, hunger, attitude, determination, commitment and work rate. They wanted it more than us. They ran the socks off. They worked harder than us. They scored two goals and they, and they ran the show. They did what they needed to do and they ran the show. And I'll fucking tell you what. This, that was a carbon copy of what they did to Arsenal last season, and then they've gone to Man, and then they've gone into this game today with Manchester United, and they've won that yet again, the same scoreline, and done the exact same thing what they did with Arsenal last season at home, absolutely tore them apart, absolutely dominated them, absolutely put them in their place, and then done the exact same thing to Manchester United today. So. It's very, very, very disappointing to walk away with, with obviously not even a point at St James's Park. I mean, we could have easily still found a draw, as well. So, yeah, very disappointed to walk away and obviously not get anything from it. But you know, Newcastle fully deserved the win, without a doubt. But yeah, uh, as a United, for my, my, as a Man United fan perspective, absolutely. Rubbish, absolutely shocking performance from from the players, and to 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 do that today was absolutely embarrassing. To watch it as well as was absolutely embarrassing. I mean, every if it, if it was Liverpool, every single chance could have could have gone in, but we were lucky that they were not that great in the first half themselves, considering that they didn't take the chances. So, yeah, very disappointing. But getting into the game now, I thought the first half had kicked off. I thought it was an okay start. I thought um, Newcastle, though, obviously um, from the get go, you could see that you know they got on the front foot. You know the player with energy, the player with high intensity, high tempo, player with intent. Could see the fluid fluidity as well, the player with urgency as well. Every time they got on the front foot, they were a threat. They were dangerous, caused United problems, took risks. Uh, they were brave as well, um, created countless uh, chances and um, you know I thought United defensively were okay I don't think we were brilliant but obviously made a few good decent blocks um, but you know countless opportunities for Newcastle to take the lead in the first half I mean Isaac had a great chance that was probably their best chance in that half obviously Willock had another great chance I think St Maximin had a great chance uh, you know, they were just creating chances left, right and centre. United just couldn't deal with it. United were all over the place. We were a bit of a mess as well. Midfield was a joke as well. Um, yeah, it was embarrassing, I thought, in the first half. Uh, we were not good enough, not organised, all over the place. Um, Newcastle uh, with the high line as well. We had the three players up high the pitch. Um, we had Varane, uh, Shaw and Dello. And we were, we were trying to pass out from the back and obviously try and hit them on the counter, but that that the tactic just did not work whatsoever. Countless, we tried that countless times. Another countless time that we did was we kept going doing the long ball, and because you know we didn't really have anyone uh, with height as well, uh, which made it difficult to win you your fifty fifties as well, and that was all going to Newcastle's well way as well. So everything that Newcastle did. They won in every single department. They won the 50-50s, they won the second balls, they won the duels. They did everything at the end of the day. They did what they needed to do. They got to the basics. They had the momentum. They had the confidence. They played with width. They got uh, St. Maximin on the ball. And uh, they were away every single time. Every single time they on the front foot, they could have scored a goal. And the defending was an absolute joke, uh, I thought, in the second half. But to concede two goals like that were definitely avoidable. You don't concede goals like that. And I, I knew that in games like that against Newcastle, yes, it's a tough place to go. Yes, they've lost only once this season to Liverpool. But they've there's a way that you can beat this Newcastle team. Obviously, they're in fantastic form, playing well as well. Uh, obviously, a good, got a good manager in charge as well. But we never really expected that um, revenge from them as well. I thought Martinez was the only one that had the right mentality from the get-go. We didn't turn up. We didn't perform well for a full 90 minutes. We didn't go with the right attitude. 
the body language was all wrong as well from the players. The players didn't care. They didn't want to be there as well in the first half. It was an absolute joke from United, an absolute farce. And, um, you know, we got absolutely dominated. It was competitive in times. You know, I thought it was end-to-end. -end. I thought um, United had a... Well, we didn't really have any chance. For it. Well, the, the only chance they had on goal was the Anthony shot, really. But apart from that, you know, Rashford had a, a, a ball that came across him. Just needed a bit of a tap on it or just needed to shoot to score it. Uh, obviously, we had a corner just before half time. Anthony had a chance as well. First half, dreadful, uh, poor, very poor. And then in the second half, Newcastle came out uh, on the front foot, had a be much better start than Man United. Um, you know, they came out firing, um, you know, uh, on the front foot, um, you know, sh you know, uh, just caused United problems. Um, it had been all it had been coming all game long as well, um, and eventually then Willick just scored for one nil. Um, then after that, you know, we were just giving the ball away too easily, too sloppily. Um, Tanag makes some substitutions as well, tries to see a reaction from the players. Uh, there was no reaction when we went down to one nil, um, but they just took control, dominated the game. United didn't get going whatsoever in the game. Not the right midfield balance as well, and we're still played. We're still played in that same position, uh, in the same places, uh, in the same positions for the full ninety minutes. Uh, the substitutions came on at the wrong time as well, and we hadn't been a threat, and we hadn't really caused them any problems. Nick Pope had nothing to do in that game as well, so um, defensively, I thought in parts we defended well, but I thought defensively we were okay. Offensively, we lacked ideas going forward, and uh, offensively, we were dreadful, and um, just too many poor individual performances never turned up into a game like this. Nobody didn't put a shift in, and um, the result showed. And terrible performance by the players, and you know, <laughs> we were just dreadful from start to finish, and it's embarrassing to go there and lose a game like that uh, in that fashion as well. They wanted it more. And it's, it's the manner as well, the way how we lost that as well. So, oh, full credit to Newcastle where it's due. They're fantastic, they're brilliant, but United were absolutely shocking. And, uh, and another thing that I needed to pick up on as well, you know, United play with no urgency, no fluidity, no intensity, no tempo, and we're far too slow on the ball. And they just moved the ball far uh, better. Uh, they moved the ball much quicker than us. We were playing it sideways and backwards and... There's just no cohesion and um in the team and very flat footed and uh, didn't want to be there as well. And obviously the goal that we considered that Tom and I p was pissing around on the edge of the box. The lows uh, not marking on the back post, shit defending and they score for one nil. Second goal, Shaw gives away a free kick, no height in the box and Wilson scores for two nil. Not good enough in the end from start to finish. Newcastle wanted it more than us, got what they deserved. Well, in a United perspective, we got bullied. Yeah, we did. We got bullied from start to finish. The players didn't care in this game whatsoever. Showed no passion, no fire, no heart, no pride. Didn't play for the badge, didn't play for the club. Didn't care, to be honest. Didn't want to be there as well. I thought the body language was all wrong. I thought they wanted it more than us. The manner that we lost in that game was dreadful, to be honest. The players didn't care. Just very disappointing, to be honest, to walk away like that. Yes, we got bullied. thought we... Deserve to lose. I think it's Ten Hag's worst game as well. That's ideas going forward. Newcastle absolutely outclassed us. We got dominated in every single department and we got done by passion, desire, hunger, attitude, determination, commitment, work rate as well. I've got not much more to say myself. I'm speechless. I don't have much to say on it. It's not good enough. It's embarrassing. It's just a carbon copy of what they did with Arsenal last season and did it against Manchester United this season. Shit. And it's embarrassing. What went wrong and how do we rectify it for the next game? What went wrong for me, the first point for me, is the starting eleven. Now, I've got absolutely no problem. Well, I don't actually. And I'll tell you why. I don't. I knew the first thing with that starting eleven, he would pick McTominay. He's picked McTominay because he scored four goals in two games for Scotland. He's put him in, in a camp position and he absolutely created fuck all in that game, McTominay, in that position whatsoever. Um, and it, for me... I was thinking Fred, and what I'm in that game, 
I think we missed. I think we missed Fred's energy. R wrong midfield. Uh, it was the not the right midfield, not the right balance. I don't think he got it completely wrong in the starting eleven. I just think starting with Tom and was wrong. He dropped a stinker and he came off after eighty-one minutes as well. Another one was a lack of creativity in this game. Playing McTominay as a cam, dreadful tactic as well. And then in the midfield as well, there's countless times where Bruno and Sabitza are playing. Sabitza is not a CDM and Bruno is not a cam as well. It, it is not a CM, he's not a central midfielder. And then too many times we left too much space in the midfield. So then Longstaff was not, was not, well, no one was marking Longstaff and every single time. He, would, he just kept coming inside those two. They were not communicating to each other. He came inside and that's when he had the ball and had that drive to push on Newcastle. And we did it. And it happened countless times. No communication between the two. And um, we didn't have the right midfield balance as well. Um, we should have brought on some infusions at half time. You know, at half time, you know, it's not gone right for you. You need to you need to see some sort of a reaction in the second half from the players. You've just performed absolutely poorly in the first half, and we needed to see somebody on it in the half time team talk. Any other manager would have said, Eddie Howe would have said to his players, "We should have been at least two or three nil up in that game, in the first half." Didn't didn't take the chances. As lo as as long as uh, and the thing is, and this would have been the fr frustrating thing for Newcastle if they would have had countless opportunities after that. And they wouldn't be taking those chances. They would have started to get frustrated. But then, on hindsight, they took those chances. And we never brought on any substitutions at half-time to change the game. We should have brought on substitutions at, at, at half-time to change the game. And he didn't do it. Tactically, got it all completely wrong. I think Ten Hag's obviously got to take some responsibility for this game as well. Not only just the players, but I think the manager's got to take some... Uh, accountability for this game as well but we got bullied in every single department um, they they did us with the 50-50s the second balls the duels um, absolutely dominated us absolutely outclassed us from start to finish the midfield was a mess it was an absolute joke absolutely disjointed as well got overran it was non-existent in the midfield and the substitutions as well what were those substitutions man I mean, I think bringing I think bringing off Anthony was wrong. I think he was. I know he created the one chance on goal, but I think what are you doing taking off Iran, um, off when we needed, and obviously you know we give that free kick away, and we had no one for height uh, as well to go and challenge that ball. Lindelof isn't that isn't that tall as well. We've got no one tall in the box. We took off, we took we took off McTominay. We took off Iran. We took off where cost and we had no height in that box whatsoever to go and challenge that ball and to head it away. What were those substitutions, man? An absolute joke. I couldn't understand them. I know he came out and and um and um, um obviously um said what why he made those substitutions, which I completely understand. But you don't do those substitutions, unfortunately, and um. Yeah, unfortunately, he needs to learn from that, and he and that cannot happen yet again. That's now seven losses United have now suffered, but six of them have come away from home. Is it a concern, considering that yet yeah, we have another five games away from home to go? Yeah, I think it is a concern. I think obviously we've gone to big teams and lost, and you've seen it against Arsenal. We lost there three two. We lost to Man City six three. We've lost to Arsenal seven nil. We've lost to Brentford four nil. We've lost to Villa three one. Is a concern that we've lost to these sort of teams, and we've lost to some big teams as well. It is a concern for the last five games away from home. And we've still got another eleven games to go. With my maths, I think we've still got another. I think six games to go at home. We're gonna have to win all of our six games at home. I think it is. But then we're gonna have to to beat Forest away we're gonna to have to beat Tottenham as well we're gonna to have to beat Brighton as well we're gonna to have to beat West Ham and we're also gonna to have to beat Bournemouth but we're probably gonna at least have to win at least four out of those five games the thing is Eric Ten Hag needs to get a grip of this team as well go on a bit of a run dig into these players a little bit more because I think they deserve it after that game as well we need to win all of our home games now and when we go away from home we need to be able to score that first goal 
control games better and game manage them better decision making needs to be a lot more better as well you need to win all of our games at home and make sure you don't lose your games away from home i think there's teams there when we go away from home that we can we can beat for sure and that the must wins the must wins are bloody forest bournemouth west ham and i think tottenham as well brighton's going to be difficult going to have to be ready for all these games as well who's my man of the match i don't think many players had a great game i think starting with from De Gea, i thought De Gea had a good game kept us in the game at crucial times Delo didn't have a great game I thought Varane was okay I thought Martinez was okay probably the best player out of all those outfield players out there I thought Shaw was not great Sabitzer not good enough Tomane was poor Bruno was poor waving his arms about as well complaining Rashford was poor as well Weghorst was poor Anthony was okay and for me i think from my mind of the match has got to be de gea because he kept us in the game at crucial times yes he conceded two goals but i think at the end of the day he was our best player at the end of the day the best player on the pitch if it was an outfield player i'd have to give it martinez how do we beat brentford now obviously we've got brentford in our next fixture i think um we've got to rectify it in this game now i think um you know we have to this is a must-win game for manchester united and this is also uh, one of our uh, games in hands that as well uh, on Tottenham so this is a must win game for Manchester United we can't afford to draw this we can't afford to drop points we can't afford to lose this game Brentford's going to be tough you know we know what Brentford's all about they've beaten some big teams they've beaten us once so I think it's time for some revenge we're going to need to we're going to have to see a reaction from the players um, obviously a little bit of pressure as well so um, we're going to have to win this Full stop. You know, I've got no other choice but to win this game against Brentford. So we're going to have to perform well for a full 90 minutes. We're going to have to just dust ourselves off, forget about that game and look forward to the next game. We've got plenty of games to go. and We know that we can beat this Brentford side. And we have beaten them before. We know how to beat this Brentford side. And, um, you know, obviously Brentford are not great as well coming away from home. Their record and their uh, away form is not great either so i think coming into this game for brentford it's going to be absolutely massive and crucial that we win this game we've got to get back to winning ways we've got to react on wednesday night we have to make sure we get the three points here against brentford it's going to be tough it's going to be tight it's going to be a tight tactical game um but again, this is going to be another game where Casemiro is going to miss it. We're going to have to get the right midfield balance. We're going to have to be able to turn up to this game. And we're going to have to perform well for a full 90 minutes. We have to be on it from minute one to minute 90. We have to switch, stay switched on at all times as well. We're going to have to stay concentrated and focused. I think it's going to be all about don't concede, don't concede in a game like this. We have to be able to score the first goal. And um, we need to somehow get hold of that midfield and get the right balance in the midfield and um, hopefully control this game as well and control it a lot more better. And um, we need to see a reaction from every single player. We need to show more fight, more passion, more pride. We need to show the desire, the commitment, the determination, the hunger uh, as well. So we, we, we're going to need this more than Brentford uh, as much as Brentford are chasing uh, 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 Europe as well so we're going to have to uh, be on top of our game from start to finish we're going to have to prepare well for a game like this we're going to have to go with the right mentality the right mindset it's going to be a physical game Ten Hag, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see some ruthless changes from Ten Hag so um, the players that performed really badly I get off uh, for this game as well so we need to see a much, a much needed reaction from the players I'd like to see these players angry. I want to see these players with, with showing a lot more aggression about them as well. So, I, I, and again, like this, he's got to start Fred. And um, he cannot afford to play McTominay for another game. Because if we play McTominay yet again, there's going to be no way we're going to walk away with a win. So we're going to have to win this game against Brentford. It's tough. It's going to be difficult. But we're going to have to pair well. And we're going to have to be ready for the game. And we're going to have to... Be on top of our game from start to finish but Brentford the, they're the draw specialists as well but they're going to pull you around push you around and the tight and compact as well you know it's going to be a tight tactical game but they're well organized they're well coached they're well drilled they'll show the work rate and the work ethic on and off the ball they'll show incredible team spirit character and fight they're a threat on set pieces as well but they'll bring the energy, the high intensity, the high tempo. They'll be aggressive. They'll be brave. 
they'll take risks and um, when they get these chances they're going to be able to take their chances and uh, it's our it's uh, all down to what we do as well so I think we're going to have to defend properly defensively it needs to be organized we need to be tight and compact defensively frustrate them we need to be ruthless relentless aggressive high intensity high tempo play of energy create the chances take your chances be clinical get the crosses into the box drive them out of position be brave take risks set pieces could come into play he's a player of whip get between the lines got to close them down don't let them back in the game don't leave any space spaces open but they will show incredible team spirit character and fight got to do the basics right game management and decision making will be key got to get tight don't let them get a shot off sustain your attacks do the basics when you 50 50s when you second balls and when you duels put them on the back foot keep possession fullbacks have got to be effective force them to make mistakes Put them under pressure. Don't let the wingers cut back inside. Don't afford to make mistakes. Make the runs in from behind. Don't get pulled out of position. Be explosive and keep Tony and Mwembu quiet. And also, when we've got possession as well, we need to be effective with that ball as well. And we need to show that ruthlessness about of ourselves. I want our players to come out angry, pissed off, and to give it absolutely everything that they've got in this game against Brentford. And... Um, I don't want to take this game lightly against Brentford. A much needed reaction from these players. And we've got to win this game. We've got to get the three points there as well. Getting into the stats now. Possession for Newcastle, it was 45.7%. And for Man United, it was 54.3%. Goals for Newcastle, it was 2. For Man United, it was 0. Visual shots for Newcastle, it was 22. For Man United, it was 6. Shots on target for Newcastle, it was 6. And for Man United, it was 1. Accuracy for Newcastle, it was 27.3%. And for Man United, it was 16.7%. Shots into the box for Newcastle, it was 16. And for Man United, it was 5. Shots outside the box for Newcastle, it was 6. And for Man United, it was 1. Little passes for Newcastle, it was... 343 passes and for Man United it was 417 passes. The pass accuracy for Newcastle it was 77% and for Man United it was 81.1%. Getting to the substitutions now, Anthony went off for Sancho to talk about Anthony's performance. Had the measure of Dan Byrne but did not maximise it. He had his Dowling ability audibly expirated. United followers come off on the hour. Wake off went off a Martial talk about Wilk's performance. There are times when United players appear reluctant to give the ball to Wakehorst and his dire form continue with another harmless performance. Tom and I went off a of thread to talk about Scott's performance. Still mired in an identity crisis at club level. It was unclear if McTominay was supposed to defend or attack. He barely did neither. Martin has run off a McPellestry to talk about Lisandro's performance. One of the few who looked their usual selves as Newcastle created the stand out first half chances had the right mentality Varane went off a Lindelof talking about Raphael's performance defended solidly amid Newcastle's dominance in the first half but failed to act quickly enough to get in front of Willock next up we've got Brentford Brentford are seventh in the league this is going to be a big game for Manchester United. We need to see a reaction from the players. It's a must-win game. It's one of our games in hands as well. Coming into a game like this against Brentford, it's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. We're going to have to go into this game with the right mentality, the right mindset. We're going to have to stay focused and concentrated at all times. This is going to be all down to first goal yet again. In a game like this against Brentford, it's going to be competitive. I think it's going to be physical. I think we're going to have to be direct in a game like this against Brentford. Obviously, Brentford are very well drilled, well coached by Thomas Frank. We have to tactically get it right in this game as well because we got it absolutely wrong against Newcastle. But in a game like this against Brentford, we're going to have to be able to perform for a full 90 minutes. We need to turn up as well. The players have got to do their, have got to play in their roles and stay disciplined. We need to see a professional performance from the players as well. I want these players to come out firing. I want these players to get the fans right behind them. This is a game where we're going to have to make a statement now to this league. We might have had that loss to Newcastle, but we're going to bounce back in this game. We have to make sure we bounce back against Brentford because it's going to be such a huge game for Manchester United to really come into this game and we're going to have to be ready for it as well. I think, obviously, defensively, we're going to have to be able to try and frustrate them, be tight and compact. I think it starts with the defence, and then it's all what we do then with the ball. I think we're going to have to be try with a, be effective with the ball as much as we can be in the right channels. We need the players in the right time as well to take our chances. But in games like this, it's going to be all down to the first goal. They're going to fight from minute one to minute 90. They know it's Manchester United, so they're going to turn up to a game like this themselves. We owe them revenge after the... Second game of the season. We need revenge. What a better way to do it on Wednesday night where you need revenge after what had happened. 
and the four 0 embarrassing defeat. We need to get back to winning ways as well. We need the players to come out firing and angry that they want to win this game and to put it right and to get the three points here on Brentford. It's a must-win game. It's also a game in hand as well on teams around us. So we've got to win this game without a doubt. It's a big game. And we're going to have to step up to the plate here. The players are going to have to step up here. We need a disciplined performance from the players. We need a professional, strong performance by the players. We're going to put it right in a game like this against Brentford. And starting on Wednesday, we need to push now. Starting against Brentford. And it's going to have to happen in this game. And then we're going to have to really win our games that we need to win at home. And then make sure we go away from home and not lose them. We need to bring the energy with us. We need to be aggressive. We need to be ruthless. We need to be relentless sustain our attacks we're gonna to have to do the basics right we have to get the fundamentals right in this game and we're gonna to have to build on it then we can get our confidence our momentum get the first goal when we get that first goal we should be able to take control of that game dominate that game get this game put away early doors as well so then they've got nothing to to play for then then it'll be difficult for them to get back into the game into we're gonna to have to play well for a full 90 minutes we're gonna to have to perform as well and we're gonna to have to turn up as well players have got to be in the right state of mind and have to go with the right mentality the right mindset gonna to have to stay concentrated and focused at all times and we've got to win this game boys got to get the three points without a doubt without shadow it out we've got to play with courage intent conviction and we've got to turn up Brentford are scoring 1.6 goals per game Brentford are considered 1.3 goals per game Brentford have the seventh best defense in their league Brentford have won 10 drawn 13 and lost five they've lost a Fulham 3-2 Arsenal 3-0 Newcastle 5-1 Fulham 4-0 and Everton 1-0 and we're going to have to be able to get the players in the right place at the right time and we're going to have to be able to take our chances. Brentford have lost four games away from home this season. The players to look out for is Raya, Hickney, Henry, Pennock, Jorgensen, Me, Hansen, Aya, Rosalev, Norgard, Jensen, De Silva, Onyenka, Desmogard, Baptiste, Yenel, Wizza, Tony and Moembu. Hope you guys are enjoying another video. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you are new and I'll see you guys in a video in the next couple of days. And peace.